Welcome to the Yellow Jackets Hive. I'm Media Melanie here with and I'm Emily. And this is one of our cordcutting.com exclusive videos. We are here with our five buzziest moments or moments that gave us all the buzzes in Yellow Jackets so far across season one and season two. These buzzy moments that help move the plot forward. So yeah. after we're done, make sure that you chime in and let us know. Do you agree with our five buzziest moments or do you think that it there are other ones out there. Be yeah. sure to chime in. There could be. There's plenty of them. It was hard to pick five. So we're going to start <laughs> with number one, Jackie's death dream featuring Cabin Daddy. Yes. The moment when, as everybody knows, this dream, she was having this dream as she was dying. And it when I first watched it, it took me a minute to realize that was what was happening. But the moment that we saw Laura Lee and we saw Cabin Daddy, for me, that's when it like hit me. Okay, there's something really wrong here. This isn't normal. Shauna didn't come outside to bring her back in and get her warm. This is something else. And when he hits her with that line, so glad you're joining us. We've been waiting for you. It made me think back to in episode four of season one, when the plane is crashing, Natalie is sitting next to her dad and her dad says, we're almost there. It's been waiting for us. And I've always thought that those two lines were so similar that they have to be related in some kind of a way. Like, we're waiting. It's waiting for us. We've been waiting for you. Like, what is waiting? Like, is it death? Like, what? Yeah, that's a really good question. We've speculated that the bonus episode we've heard about with Jason Ritter, well, we assume it's Jason Ritter in the bonus episode, will cover the yeah. origin story of Cabin Daddy. So we're still hoping for more answers. And I think that's what makes this moment so buzzy is that mm -hmm. it's still something that we're just not aware of and we don't know. So anything that yeah. still has this outstanding answer, I think is super buzzy. And none of us were expecting this death dream. So no. And see, like getting a face to this like mysterious man that own, like who we think owned the cabin before they found it was really interesting. And they don't do anything without a reason. So there was obviously a reason why they showed us Cabin Daddy, why they did it in that format, and why it almost appeared as if that's where Jackie's stuck for the rest of her life. Like her spirit is forever stuck out in the wilderness. Number Ooh. two moment that gave us all the buzzes, kind of two in one, Avi being discovered, and with that, the discovery of the caves. He reappeared my jaw was like on the floor. I was hoping that he would reappear, but I wasn't like hopeful that he was actually still alive just because, I mean, we've said this before, you have to suspend disbelief for a lot of aspects of this show. And for uh, however old he is kid to be able to survive on his own out in the middle of the woods with no food, no water, no shelter for two months, that's extreme. And for me, the moment was so interesting because Ty and Van find him when Van is following Thaisa sleepwalking and they stumble upon him. But instead of running towards them, he runs away from them. Like he's afraid of them mm -hmm. and want to be found by them which was really interesting. And when we interviewed Luciano, he said something that stuck with me. Javi has seen some things and that he probably views the group at this point when he's found as monsters because of what he's seen. And that always made me think that he had to have made his way back to that camp at some point and he saw something that terrified him and made him not want to go back. My guess being them eating Jackie and he wasn't there for Jackie's death. So he was probably under the assumption that they killed her to eat her. And he thought, maybe I will be next if I come back. Safe assumption, I think, on Javi's part. Yeah. And along with Javi being found, we are now aware of the existence of the caves, which mm -hmm. now, of course, Coach Ben is hiding in. And what's interesting about the caves is that we saw some things in there. We saw those tiny little bones, which we suspect are rodent bones. Uh, we also saw a lantern, and we're not mm -hmm. sure how the lantern got there. Did Javi take the lantern from the camp or perhaps could... Ty in one of her dark states have brought it there because yeah. we also know Javi referenced his friend. Mm -hmm. So who was his friend? We again suspect that it was dark Ty and the lantern being there. We're kind of tie that together a little bit and yeah. confirm our theory. And unfortunately Javi's dead. So we will maybe never know who this friend was, this mysterious yeah 
person who may or may not be the woman in the tree root drawing that he yeah. made. And the caves, of course, something the Phantoms long speculated on. And now we know that's where Coach Ben is hiding after the cabin burned down. Kahavi being alive and then discovering the caves all in one super buzzy moment. Yeah, it opened a whole new aspect to the show with those caves, especially since the cabin burned down, but we'll get to that. Number three, buzziest moment in Yellow Jacket so far, Nat being crowned the Antler Queen and the cabin burning down. Another twofer, if you will, because these are very connected moments. Why did this one give us all the buzzes, Emily? Well, after season one concluded, we were actually like all under the impression that Lottie was our Antler Queen. Um, this was for multiple reasons because number one, we see her at Doom coming and she puts the an antler headdress on her head. And number two, there were multiple interviews where Courtney Eaton even said it herself that Lottie was the antler queen. So when she bestowed this honor, if you want to call it an honor upon Natalie, it really shocked me. Like I was not expecting that to happen. And this led to the entire group all bowing their allegiance to her one by one. For me, I absolutely loved this moment when they all bowed down to her. It showcased all their different personalities. Like Misty bowed to her like a like an old court jester would do. It was like them all coming together again. And they all trust Lottie for some reason. So they agreed and went along with her. And they all were like, okay, you're our new leader. Like, this is it. And it was just really a really interesting moment. And at that exact moment, we also saw Coach Ben outside the cabin grabbing supplies. What he grabbed was very interesting. He grabbed an axe, he grabbed a rope, and he grabbed, as we all saw, the matches, which is what leads us to believe that he burned down the cabin. That's a logical thought process to have. You see somebody with matches, and then a few scenes later, you see the cabin on fire. And if it wasn't for Shauna and her saltiness being up journaling in her journal saying, like, it should have been me, they might have all died in that fire. And the cabin burning down is obviously a buzzy moment for so many reasons. Their security is completely gone. The one thing that they had that made them feel safe in that environment is now gone. Where will they go? Like, are they going to go to the plane? Are they going to go to these tree caves? Are they just going to shelter in place outside? Are they not going to know what to do? Because all their survival skills that they've also learned, they've learned from Coach Ben, and Coach Ben is gone. <laughs> yes, he is. We see him with the matches. We see him with yeah. the axe. We see him with the rope. Logical conclusion. However, this is Yellow Jackets, so we never know. It could be a red herring. And what makes this so buzzy again is that we don't know. Anything we don't have answers for and that we have seen surrounding makes it a little extra buzzy because it allows for, sure. for all of this speculation. So, I mean, I think Coach Ben burned the cabin down. Um, Will Vaughn, cabin daddy himself, when we interviewed him, thought that Coach Ben burned the cabin down. So, yeah. I, mean, I mean... Who else would it be? None of those girls burned it down. Why would they burn down their shelter? That makes no sense. Exactly. Unless it was it or the wilderness and somehow a spontaneous fire emerged. But with Shauna having been awake at the time, I yeah. just, I don't know if, if that could have transpired. But that was a buzzy one. And of course, that was a big cliffhanger for season two. And we're curious, what will season three open with? Will it be the immediate fallout from the cabin burning? Will it be a few months ahead of time? Since the passage of time is slightly unequal between the two timelines. Yeah. So... Ooh. More I hope they show us the immediate aftermath. That's something that like, I'm very curious to see because now they're really in survival mode with no shelter. Yes, so. they are. Yes, they are. I mean, there's not a lot of places to go. Unfortunately, we know they're still in the wilderness for XYZ months. And mm -hmm. therefore, even though there was all that smoke from this big fire, they're not going to get rescued right now. This fire smoke is not going to get them rescued. So we do and know I, that. I think if Coach Ben did burn it down, he chose to burn it down at night so that no one would see the smoke. If <laughs> right? there is anyone nearby, that's the perfect cover. Nobody's going to see it in the dark. Yeah. There's that, not anyone close enough to smell it. Really good point. That is a really yeah. good point. So we'll see what the fallout is in season three. Buzzy moment number four, the reveal at the end of season one, who the fuck is Lottie Matthews? 
And we mm-hmm. learned throughout teasers and whatnot before season two aired that Lottie Matthews is alive, well, and head of a cult. Along sure with that, is. this is another two for a moment. We're going to call it casting reveals. Uh, we also learned that Van survived. Uh, we didn't learn that until we got the casting announcement after season two. But knowing that Lottie and Van were going to be alive in the adult timeline gave us all so much excitement as a fandom. And that gave me all the buzzes. I mean, Lauren Ambrose alone. That moment when Susie says, who the fuck is Lottie Matthews? Like, I rem- I still remember watching it for the first time. And the size of my goosebumps, they were like the size of dinner plates. I was like, oh my god, Lottie Body is still alive. Are you kidding? And it made me think immediately that she was going to be the big bad, the bad one that everybody's afraid of. And it didn't really shape up like that. <laughs> No, it did not. Of course, we know what happened to Lottie at the end of season two. She's heading back to the institution after the hunt and, of course, the tragic loss of Natalie in the adult timeline. Van, who was introduced to us, we kind of knew there was something going on, right? Because we saw the mail that was urgent, late bills, etc. And she's tossing them in the trash. She had some sort of medications. She revealed that she has terminal cancer. That was kind of a blow for us. We didn't even get to see her until closer to the middle of season two. Mm -hmm. And then knowing she had cancer was devastating, but she may or may not continue on through the rest of the five seasons. Yeah, anything is possible. And if she really does have nine lives, she's still got like three more left. (laughs) That we were going to see Lottie and that Van was going to be in season two was a huge moment for the fandom. The way that they released that the way they did. Uh, Lottie within the show and then Van outside of the show. I I think it was smart. Yeah, it was. I agree. That brings us to our next of our five moments that gave us all the buzzes. Jeff Sadecki was actually the blackmailer. Yeah. And I did not see that coming did you see that one coming emily no it i it didn't even hit me until shauna was kneeling in the closet and she made the connection like after she had already accused adam because she was under the impression that it was adam because adam slept over her house and to hide from jeff he hid in the closet he hides in the closet and then not long after that she goes in the closet and realizes that her journals are gone. Um, I don't think she sees the glitter at that point, but the journals being gone obviously made her assume that Adam took the journals. And she thought that that meant that Adam was the blackmailer. So she went to confront him. Obviously, we all saw how that <laughs> turned out. And Adam died as a result of that confrontation. Did not turn out well. well. <laughs> and it was only upon her returning home And going back in the closet and seeing that the journals were back where they belonged, that she saw the glitter on the floor and that line that Thaisa says, just look for an asshole covered in glitter, just like pops in her head. And she makes the connection and she's like, honey, do you know where this glitter came from? And he has the worst poker face, like, out of anybody (laughs) I've ever seen. It's so bad. Worst ever. To him confessing that he blackmailed them because he borrowed $50,000 from some loan sharks to help keep their furniture business afloat. And he didn't know how else to get the money back to repay these people. Shauna also thought that he was cheating on her because she saw these texts from a woman named Bianca, but Bianca just happened to be involved with the loan sharks, and that was, like, his point of contact, I'm assuming. That one was a big one. I I didn't suspect it to be Jeff because I didn't think Jeff was capable of that. (laughs) Same. That gave me all the buzzes. For that reason, not alone, but that was a big part of it because he was working with Randy, who is known for asking who invented the Pope. And, you know, Randy's a great character. We got to interview Jeff Holman as well, who plays Randy as an adult, which was super fun. So him and Randy working together was very unexpected. We never would have thought these two had the brain power to put together such a scheme and actually have it succeed for the most part. That uh, the blackmailer scene too also led to everybody's like favorite Jeff moment. There's no book club, which will forever live in my head. <laughs> actually really difficult to narrow it down to five. So yeah. again, did we get it right? Did we get it wrong? We would love for you to drop a comment on this video or on the post on the cord cutting page and let us know what are your top five 
five buzzy moments. Any yeah. of these ones or are they different? Let us know. Yeah. Yes, please. So right. until we spill again.